Good morning, agents, and welcome to another daily episode of Target Loot today for Saturday, November 21st. In this series, we cover the Target Loot map, Dark Zone exclusives, highlights for the weekly vendor resets, build and farming suggestions, and much more. I'm Agent Shadow, and if you enjoy this video, consider rating it with a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you never miss a daily or build video. And remember to comment below if you have any questions. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get this video started. All right, agents. So starting off in DZ West, the main thing I'm going to highlight is the rail splitter with perfectly accurate. You can farm that a DZ exclusive assault rifle that you can pick up in DZ West today. Otherwise, you could go ahead and go to the Dark Zone West uh, vendor and you can pick up the rock and roll shotgun for 152 DZ resources that comes with perfectly extra. That's a 30 round magazine or 30 round drum and a shotgun that's fully automatic. And I highly recommend picking it up for a good Hunter's Fury SMG, you know, shotgun damage build. Dark Zone South has Douglas and Harding, so no Dark Zone exclusive worth mentioning. But we do have rifles over here in DZ East. And there's three rifles that are highly worth mentioning that you can farm for today in the Dark Zone East. And that's going to be the Harmony with Perfectly in Sync for all your skill builds. And then the Virginian with Perfect Boomerang for your DPS headshot damage builds. And then lastly, the Everlasting Gaze with Perfect Perpetuation for all your status effect builds. Alright agents, over here on the north side of DC, we got Grupo Sombro at Camp White Oak. So of course, one piece for DPS builds and two pieces for those explosive skill damage builds. We got knee pads over here at Coney Island Ballpark. So there's two exotic knee pads you can get. That'd be the Sawyer's knee pads and of course the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads. And then lastly, you could farm Overlord for these, but you could also farm knee pads for the Fox's Prayer knee pads. This gives you 8% damage to targets out of cover. That's multiplicative damage, the best type of damage in this game. You got Badger Tough over here at the Coney Island Amusement Park. Now you can get the 0S chest piece with Perfectly Unbreakable. You know, every 55 seconds that your armor breaks, you get 100% of it back. We got some machine guns at Manning National Zoo. So there's three exotic SMGs you can farm for here today. It's going to be the Lady Death, the Chatterbox, and the Backfire. All three of those are highly worth farming for. And the Backfire you had to have gotten already from the Season 3 reward. And the Chatterbox you'd have to complete the quest first. If you haven't, I'll put a guide you know, that's really quick in the top right card now. It's about five minutes and I'll show you how to get it really fast. The Dark, uh, the dark Winter and the Apartment are Dark Zone exclusives. So yesterday would have been a great day to farm for them. Otherwise, you can get some named ones in the LZ, like the Safety Distance with Perfect Outsider, which is what I recommend. The Swap Chain, the Grudge, there's several others. And then Kenley College is closed, or sorry, open for another two days. And the Summit, of course, you can pick your own targeted loot. So let's go check out what we got on the west side. All right, agents, over here on the west side, targeted loot highlights. I'm going to get started with the gear sets. Now... First off, we got Tip of the Spirit DARPA Research Labs. It's a really niche build for specialization weapons, so I'm not going to go over it thoroughly. But please comment below if you use Tip of the Spear, why, and maybe a build example, because I'd never use it. We got Hardwired at Lincoln Memorial, so I'll put my best turret, you know, Assault Turret Striker Drone build in the bottom left right now. You know, this is the best one to run until TU-12 drops for sure. Same with Ongoing Directive. I got a, a great bleed build, but it utilizes the Ridgeway's Pride. You know, four pieces with the Ridgeway's Pride and the Eclipse Protocol Backpack. It's probably the blessed, uh, best way to run the Ongoing Directive gear set as of TU 11.1. Aces and Eights at Foggy Bottom is a headshot build. So what you're going to want to run is three pieces of Aces and Eights, two pieces of Aralta Holding with a backpack with Vigilance or Composure, and the chain killer chess piece, which is Walker Harrison Co. And then lastly, we got Hunter's Fury at West End. That's a you know SMG shotgun damage build. Very up close and personal. I'll put my absolute favorite Hunter's Fury build in the top right card right now. You know, that's Death Grip Gloves with four piece Hunter's Fury with the chess piece. And of course, you got the memento backpack that goes perfectly with it. Otherwise, for normal targeted loot, we got holsters at Federal Emergency Bunker. So there's a couple different exotic holsters you can get. That's going to be the Imperial Dynasty and Dodge City holsters. Otherwise, you can pick up the Forge holster. That's going to give you 50% extra shield health, a whole extra skill tier of health were uh, added to your shield. We got Hana Yu at Downtown West. You can farm for the Force Multiplier Backpack with Perfect Combined Arms. 
extra 30% skill damage every 3 seconds you land a shot. Sokolov today is at bank HQ for everyone looking for those good chest and backpack pieces. You're going to want to run, you know, intimidate or obliterate on the chest piece. And then of course for the backpack, I would run something like adrenaline rush probably or maybe vigilance. Otherwise, I run the memento, honestly. We got light machine guns at DCD HQ. There's two exotic light machine guns, the Bullet King and the Pestilence. I personally prefer the Pestilence over the Bullet King. I think they need to buff the base damage of the Bullet King. Otherwise, there's several named LMGs I'll put in the bottom left right now that, you know, are definitely worth farming for, for sure. Backpacks at Constitutional Hall. If you want to refarm for the Memento backpack after you've already gotten it from the Season 3 reward track. And then we got Overlord at Roosevelt Island for those Fox's Prayer knee pads. If you want that 8% damage targets out of cover Fox's Prayer knee pads, I would farm Roosevelt Island today instead of over here at Coney Island. It just kind of lowers the loot pool and enables you to farm faster for it. That kind of looks to be it to really farm for over here. I mean, I'll mention two last things actually. We got Providence Defense at Pentagon. You can farm for the Sacrifice of Perfect Glass Cannon amplifying all damage by 30%, but all incoming damage to you by 60%. And lastly, Petrov at White House, you could farm the Contractor's Gloves. That's 8% damage to armor. It stacks really well with LMG builds, and of course with damage to armor, like two pieces of Walker Harrison Co. All right, agents, over here on the east side of DC, starting off with the gear sets, we got Strikers at Jefferson Plaza. Like I always say, uh, the only thing I really ever run this for, or not even me, just what I see is three pieces for, you know, increased rate of fire, and usually for a merciless build. Otherwise, I don't ever see it being run, or I don't either. Eclipse Protocol at Viewpoint Museum, now four pieces with an Imperial Dynasty, or the Vile Mask, with, of course, one piece of Golan gear is going to be what you want to run for an Eclipse Protocol fire damage build, or just an absolute status effect build. And then lastly, we got Foundry Bulwark at Grand Washington Hotel. I see the DZ played with uh, Foundry Bulwark sets. Really hard to kill some people in there. But honestly, it's a really great armor regen tank build where you can just kind of have a ton of armor and almost never die, but still have a little bit of DPS. So, you know, if they can't kill you, then eventually you're going to kill them, you know, even if you're shooting marshmallows. But remember, just like Future Initiative, the chest and backpack are raid exclusive to the Iron Horse raid. All right, for the regular targeted loot, we do got Bellstone Armory at Downtown East. Now, the Liquid Engineer is a Dark Zone exclusive. I know some of you are going to say that you've gotten it outside of the Dark Zone, but it is confirmed as a Dark Zone exclusive. The only other way I can think of getting it is through weekly projects, named item caches, or targeted loot rewards. Otherwise, you can farm for the everyday carrier with perfectly efficient. That does drop from NPCs in the light zone, which is anything outside of the dark zone. And that is confirmed for sure. We got masks at Jefferson Trade Center. So today's the perfect day for anyone that needs that Coyote's mask for all your DPS builds. Because Coyote's mask already drops at Jefferson Trade Center from the boss Coyote at the end of this mission. You know, you get a chance for it to drop. But since it's mass targeted loot, that's going to really increase the rate of drop chance for that. Otherwise, you can get the punch drunk mask, but I would rather farm Douglas and Harding. But since it's in the dark zone, I would farm today for that punch drunk mask, which gives you 20% headshot damage baked right into it. Otherwise, you can farm for the vile mask if you want to mix it with that Eclipse Protocol build I mentioned earlier. And that's pretty much it for masks. We got shotguns at American History Museum. So, of course, the Sweet Dreams exotic shotgun comes with the Sandman talent. You can one-hit melee kill anything that's not an elite. So that means red and purple barred enemies. Otherwise, what I recommend is the three best shotguns in this game, which is the Mop with 10% armor on kill, the Custom M870, and the Marine Super 90. And I always run, you know, up close and personal talent on that. Really, otherwise I don't see anything that stands out to me. You know, Fenris, a capital building for your assault rifle builds. Murakami for that extra skill duration. Richter and Kaiser is great for healer builds. And Shine a Light for explosive skill damage builds. And Seska for that extra 10% crit hit chance. And Wyvernware for that extra 10% skill damage. And of course, Eligard over here in Federal Triangle for all your shield build users. Alright guys, let's go check out New York City so we can end this video. 
All right, agents. Lastly, over here in New York City, Target Alu highlights. So starting off with gear sets, we got Future Initiative at the Tombs. Like I said earlier, the backpack and chest piece are raid exclusive to the Iron Horse raid, but you can get every other piece. It's great with a healer build. And of course, you want to usually run it with an Alp Summit chest piece, usually with Empathetic Resolve or a backpack with Safeguard on it. And then we got Negotiator's Dilemma at Stranded Tanker. This is a great DPS set. It runs great with ARs, SMGs, and LMGs. And I'll put an example of my double LMG build video in the top right right now that utilizes Negotiator's Dilemma 4 piece. We got gear system mods in the open world of Financial District today. If you want to farm for those, you know, maxed out 13%, you know, protection from elite mods, 12% critted damage mods, and so on. And then MMR is at Wall Street, so you can farm for the exotic Mantis and Nemesis if you've already gotten it. But of course, the Nemesis, you have to complete the quest. And then otherwise, the best MMRs in this game, the named ones would probably be the White Death and the Ekem's Longstick with Perfect Ranger. And we got chess pieces at Liberty Island. So there's two exotic chess pieces you can farm for, the Tardigrade and the Ridgeway's Pride. But you have to get the project for Ridgeway's Pride at floor 100 of the Summit after you collect each difficulty dog tag or exotic component from the floors. And then once you complete that project, you can re-farm for it or have someone drop it for you. We got Walker Harrison Co. at Battery Park. You can farm for the Chain Killer chest piece with Perfect Headhunter on it. Now that's just mandatory for all headshot damage builds. And if you're farming for that and get it, next up would be Aralda Holdings at Civic Center where you wanna farm for a piece with weapon damage, headshot damage, and weapon handling. All right, agents. Well, that was the target loop for today. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed my content. If you would like to become a member for support and exclusive perks, click the join button below to further support my dream of being a full-time content creator. You can also grab some shadow gaming merchandise by clicking the link in the pinned comment and video description below. I got lowered prices across the board. I got promo code for free shipping until the November 30th and all sorts of extra stuff that you can check out. You can also support me on alt tech like Patreon, Subscribestar, Storyfire, and BitChute. But if you're still watching this video right now to the end, thank you. That really is the best way to support me, and if you're using an ad blocker, consider whitelisting me on it. Take care, agents, and be sure to stay tuned for more daily Division 2 content. This is Agent Shadow signing off. I will see you in the next video. Take care, agents.